How's it going, guys? Uh, we're going to be having a little bit of fun today, as opposed to most days, I guess, where you all hate seeing my face. One of my favorite things to do is recommend things to people, whether it be a game, a movie, a show. I just love telling people, hey, you should go watch this thing, and then they go watch the thing, and they go, yo, that thing was sick, and I'm like, dude, I told you, Peppa Pig is lit as hell. So what I decided to do is make a whole video centered around recommendations, but the thing is, you can't just recommend one thing to everyone, because then you have me going, hey, go watch Daredevil if you like seeing people get beaten to a pulp, and I'll have people in the comments going, dog, I'm five, I'm into, like, Barbie and shit. So I bonked my head a couple of times, and I realized hey why don't I just give a recommendation based on each of the 16 Myers-Briggs personality types and also make sure that everything that I talk about is on Netflix because then most people are able to actually see it and then um no, that's the whole story. That's where we are now. Just to clarify, I'm Canadian, so I'm going off of Canadian Netflix, but most of these shows should be available wherever you are, and just in case, I made sure I added a couple extra recommendations wherever I could so that even if you've watched that thing or it's not available in your country, you're getting at least a recommendation out of it. Also, it doesn't matter if you've forgotten which personality type out of these you are. I've entirely forgotten which one I am. I'm going to be giving short little blurbs about each personality type, so if it sounds like you, you'll probably get a good show or two out of it. Plus, a lot of people are a close mix with a lot of this stuff, so watch through the whole video and see if any of the personality traits jump out at you. Okay, I talked for way too long there. Uh, we're just gonna get into this now. ISTJ, or the inspector. People with an ISTJ personality type tend to be reserved, practical, and quiet. Freaking nerds. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was mean. I'm joking. I'm joking. They enjoy order and organization in all areas of their lives, including their home, work, family, and projects. ISTJs value loyalty in themselves and others and place an emphasis on traditions. Ooh, okay, so they got a fun strengths and weaknesses chart. This is gonna be pretty helpful, honestly. I, I won't read them out one by one, but I'll have it up for everyone to see. So everything from the little nickname they gave the inspector to things like uh, detail-oriented, observant, and logical and practical makes me think the people in this personality type are really gonna love mystery shows or shows that don't tell you exactly what's going on and they spoon feed you information little by little and you're given time to theorize. As some fringe recommendations, I'd say uh, the first season of Stranger Things and also even the first season of The Good Place really fit the bill of that latter thing that I, that I mentioned, but I think the obvious choice here has to be Sherlock. Not only is this a wildly fun show to watch, but it's also really cool to follow along with the detective stuff, but also like Sherlock as a character is the definition of judgmental and insensitive. I feel like this show is the perfect mix of the strengths and weaknesses of this personality type. ESTP, the persuader. Wow, that sounds so devious. <laughs> People with this personality type are frequently described as outgoing, action-oriented, and dramatic. ESTPs are outgoing, you just said that. And enjoy spending time with a wide circle of friends and acquaintances. We all know that just means people don't want to hang out with you. <laughs> I'm so mean today. Strengths, gregarious. God, that is a word and a half, isn't it? Uh, funny, persuasive, adaptable, and they're also impulsive and competitive. Yeah, without any hesitation, the choice here it has to be Community. Community is my personal favorite show ever, and I think it ticks basically all of these boxes. The show, especially after the first season, loves bending genres and coming up with really unique plot lines, so it's perfect for anyone who gets really bored easily or is looking for a multi-dimensional TV show. It also has a bunch of background details that you can pick up on if you're really observant like this says and it has jokes that you'll only catch on like the fourth time watching an episode plus every character is like batshit shit insane and they come together to form the most codependent competitive horrible most toxic group you could ever hope for but they're still really endearing istp or the crafter people with istp personality types enjoy having time to think alone and are fiercely independent istps also love action new experiences hands-on activities and the freedom to work at their own pace and again the uh, go down to the strengths and weaknesses here. This sounds a lot like the type of person where you tell them to buy something and they'll be like, ah, eh, nah, I'll just build it myself. Like, no, you can't just build a slide for your kids out of two pieces of plywood and a hammer, guy. Okay, I've been looking at this for a while now and it's a little bit tough to figure out from the shows that I watched, but I'll give it my best shot. It seems like they would like hanging out with people with similar personalities quite a bit, like other people who build things on their own. Kind of like when two car enthusiasts come together and they talk about like, overclocking their suspension to get triple the gas mileage. I don't know, what this, what is a car? I, I know there's an engine and a steering wheel and that's the extent of my knowledge. From what I've seen, I'd say probably the best fit I can think of is the Punisher. The Punisher is a very do not say kind of person. He's very risk heavy and adaptable. And I think he fits in a lot with some of these. Actually, he, he probably fits well with every single one of these weaknesses here. He's a resourceful anti-hero and the show itself doesn't like to waste your time. It always likes moving on to the 
next thing. It's action oriented and it has a great momentum to it. ESTJ, the director, they are assertive and very concerned with making sure that things run smoothly and according to the rules. They're committed to tradition, standards, and laws. Uh, yeah, 10 4. Uh, we got a narc here. Yeah, uh, need help taking down a narc. That's right, even the police are calling you a narc. Committed to tradition, standards, and laws? You freaking loser. Okay, so looking at the strengths and weaknesses, the vibe I'm getting is that people in this personality type really like things under control. I feel like some of these personality traits, not all of them, but a few of them at least apply to myself. And I know that the reason why I can get like that is because I just want things to go right. I don't want anything to cause me unnecessary grief. And I feel like the best way to do that is to take charge myself, not because I don't think other people aren't capable of doing a good job. It's just that I'm less of a variable in my head than other people are. I feel like in terms of what TV shows would work with that, things that have really established structures, ones where people have backup plans on backup plans that you're always confident that everything is going to go right. Even when they're backed up against the wall, you're like, they'll probably be able to think themselves out of this situation. Personally, I think some of the shows that do this the best are Prison Break and Money Heist, especially the first season, maybe two seasons of Prison Break, where you're just watching this genius pull off an elaborate plan in the most effective way. Money Heist can kind of cheat sometimes because it has a lot of backup plans that are never alluded to and don't logically make sense for anyone to have ever thought of. But that's actually a pretty good thing here. You always feel like even if things are going really wrong, there's a plan Z somewhere in the back of the vault that is designed to specifically take care of this. ISFP, um... Wait, does this one not have a nickname? What? You guys got done dirty with that one. People with an ISFP personality are frequently described as quiet, easygoing, and peaceful. Okay, so this is the Zen squad. There you go. There's your nickname, ISFP. Hola, hola. We Zen boys. <laughs> God, I hate myself. Strengths are aware, practical, and hands-on. Weaknesses, quiet, need personal space, and don't like conflict. Is it just me or none of those really weaknesses? They're just kind of slight preferences. I know some of the others were like that too, but at least they had stuff like um, bossy or doesn't like commitment or uh, judgmental, insensitive, tends to blame other- Wow, ISTJ, these guys went really hard on you guys, what the heck? The ISFP one is like, uh, yeah, they're kind of quiet and they need their personal space and the ISTJ one is like, is a piece of shit. <laughs> I feel like people here would really like baking shows, just like really calming things, but I don't really watch that, so I, I can't recommend any of those to you. Of the stuff I've seen, I would give a good shout to Parks and Rec. It's really relaxed and simple, and there's no like laugh track bombarding you with noise all the time. It's just overall really laid back and almost conversational. The show has a similar delivery and ideas to The Office, but instead of trying to make you cringe all the time, it's it's just a lot more pleasant. It's like a nice night out with friends. Uh, also, I just realized it gives the nickname out here. It just didn't have it in the description. Apparently, you guys are the artists, but I'm not gonna lie. I like mine a lot more. ESFP, the performer. People with ESFP personality types are often described as spontaneous, resourceful, and outgoing. They love being the center of attention and are often described as entertainers or class clowns. Uh, does it count if I'm just a clown or does that not apply? These people are also gregarious, again, with this word. I don't know what it means. Is it like a dinosaur? or something. I just want to let everyone know that I do know what it means, okay? I'm not an idiot. You don't have to go off in the comments telling me how stupid I am, okay? It means liking to be with other people. <laughs> Duh, everyone knows that. Really social and spontaneous, but is bored easily and impulsive. So you're Manny from Over the Hedge. This seems like somebody who would like for a show to always be moving, not much downtime, just very fast paced. From what I've heard, Ozark might be in your ballpark. I haven't watched it yet personally though, it's on my list, but I have recently watched One Punch Man and I think that fits the bill perfectly. The show is always funny, it's always moving, the episodes aren't very long and you get new uh, characters, villains, story arcs and everything just at a breakneck speed. Plus, obviously, since it's an anime, the action is fun and flashy and fast. So overall, while it's not the longest show in the world, it is wickedly fast paced and I really enjoyed it. I also want to point out that I personally don't watch too many animes. This is like the first one I really watched since I was a kid and I was watching like Pokemon and stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with anime. I just haven't really gotten around to watching many of them. But if you're somebody who doesn't really watch that kind of stuff, you're in the same boat as I am and I really enjoy this show. So don't not watch it because of that one fact. INTP, the thinker. People who score as INTP are often described as quiet and analytical. They enjoy spending time alone, thinking about how things work, and coming up with solutions to problems. 
Uh, I don't think that's exactly how coding works, bud. So I think this is an interesting contrast to the inspector, which seemed a lot more like looking at something that had already happened and going into detail about the specifics of something that already exists. Whereas this is kind of trying to find or create something new. I guess it's the difference between somebody who is actually playing Where's Waldo and somebody who is creating the Where's Waldo book, trying to find the best place to put him. I'm sure most of you guys have probably seen Breaking Bad, but that's one of my two suggestions here. The ingenuity of that show is not around solving puzzles or creating a perfect perfect plan. It's more uh, improvising and trying to find the best way to become a more dominant figure no matter what situation you're placed in. The second one I would say is actually another anime uh, and it's one that I've only just started watching uh, but my brother really loves it and he talks about it all the time and it's Death Note. I feel like this also has a lot of that seat of your pants ingenuity and actually it also has like a lot of detective stuff I think so it would be really good for the inspector as well in that way. ESFJ, the caregiver. People with an ESFJ personality type tend to be outgoing, loyal, organized, and Hearted. ESFJs gain energy from interacting with other people. God, could not be me. I love hanging out with people, but I reach a certain point in the day where I just entirely crash and people think I'm depressed. Wow, here's another one where you guys got absolutely ripped to shreds. I think this is the most weaknesses we've seen and they're all big whoppers. I don't even want to diss this one. I feel like it's dissing you for me. <laughs> I feel like this is a group of people that has already seen Friends, so I wouldn't even try and waste your time with a Friends recommendation. Actually, isn't Friends of Netflix now, so that would even work anyways. I think another show though that fits this perfectly is Modern Family. It's a sitcom with a consistent structure and a huge cast of characters which is probably really good for this personality type. You probably really like shows that have a lot of characters that you can care for and they have wildly different personalities and you can be emotionally invested in them but you won't ever be worried about anything horrible happening to them. They can have their ups and downs, but you won't be emotionally devastated by anything that happens to them. And I think that has Modern Family written all over it. Hi, okay, uh, so I'm gonna cut back to me finishing the video in just a second here, but I wanted to cast a few of you who leave this video early because you're monsters. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, then please throw on a like, maybe even a sub if you really enjoyed it. I am a tiny channel right now and I'm really trying to grow it, so any bit of support really helps. Okay, do that and then you can click off. I, I love you forever, thanks. <laughs> okay, so I'm realizing that this video is probably getting pretty long already and we're only halfway through so we're doing a first on this channel and I'm gonna split this into two parts. I try to have the second part of this video out within a few days of this one so keep an eye out or if you're watching this a few days after it's released, head on over to my channel and see if I've posted the second part. I hope you guys got good recommendations, even if they were shows that you've already seen before. I hope that my breakdown of why you would enjoy them gives you a better idea of what to look for when you're endlessly browsing through Netflix next. I'd really appreciate if you guys could throw in a like on this video, maybe a comment and a sub if you really enjoyed it, and I will finish this sentence in the next...